Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Basketball Report. Joining me as always, Coach Pat Scary. And Coach, just a, you know, a bizarre season so far. You've played three games. You've had several games canceled now. Take us through what has gone on over the last week. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. I'm in, inside the arena now. I've just the masks on. Uh, I'll give you a quick shot. Coach McDonald is is working out. Curtis Holland, he is uh, he hasn't practiced yet, uh, official practice. So he's uh, a couple guys that are injured, are not in quarantine. Everyone else is. We did have a guy test positive. Uh, he's got no symptoms, so that's good. Um, but we're we're in a we're in a pause right now. And what had happened before, the that's why the UMBC game got canceled. We actually had two false positives for the other games that came back after we ran the, the PCR, the rapid tests came back positive. And then when we did the PCR test, they were in fact negative. So I, you know, I am proud. I mean, it seems I've hit a lot of, a lot of teams uh, and it's going to be a fluid situation. I think, uh, you know, uh, look, I'll give you an in-depth, can I give you an in-depth philosophical answer, Spiro? You, 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 sure. Just to help, to well, tell everyone out. Look at, well, you're a very philosophical man, so yes. All right, go, like, go so, right like, so, yeah, like, like Socrates. Like, so some people say, why, you know, look, why, they, why hasn't the NCAA said anything? Uh, the NCAA is not going to say anything. The, the NCAA's revenue stream comes from the Division One men's basketball tournament. You want to have championships in men and women's sports and all other sports outside of the bowl, football bowl series, it comes from the Division One men's basketball tournament, so they can't move those dates and get the same amount of money. That's why we're playing basketball this year. If you've decided to play basketball, it's going to cover championships in men and women's Division One, Two, and Three, every other sport. Now our season is going to be choppy right now uh, because of because of the virus. Right, we're not running things; the virus is running things. So that's why we're at. Um, where we're at and we've got to continue to try to navigate through it best we can. You know, it's interesting because when you announced the Maryland game, when we were up in Connecticut and I said to you, I said, well, coach, doesn't that put you over the limit? And you said to me, do you really think we're going to play all our games? And uh, well, it's turned out that you're not now you can try to schedule games. Can you not? And, and my question would be, can you schedule games in the conference season because you're only playing on Saturday and Sundays? Could you add a Tuesday or a Wednesday game in January and February? Yeah, absolutely. And the plan is to, so what we could be looking at, um, we're going to play the Mason game and all likelihood it's going to get moved to December 23rd. I believe we're going to play Coppin on the 26th or 27th. And then we're going to add at least a game on the 29th, um, maybe two games, but before we get to JMU, because we could move JMU's on a pause too. So I've already asked them if they wanted to push conference play back a day or two. But there are some schools like UMBC is absolutely interested in playing. Once we get going, they have like a 17 day break in America East play that could be for makeup games. So, and then don't forget travel is going to factor in for some schools in different leagues. So we might end up, um, it might make more sense as we get going to, if, if someone else had a pause or, you know, to, to play some midweek games again on like Tuesdays against some of the good local teams. So the number of games you have now is no indication as to how many games you're going to have in a month. Well, no, I mean, you know, the, you can, you can play 27. Right. Um, there's a, there's a minimum you need to qualify for the NCAA tournament, but you know, obviously we want to be committed to our student athletes. The guys want to play. You know, what's been hard for our guys is we've game prepped for eight different opponents and only played three games. You know, part of the bubble deal was that was on me. I was willing to take a couple games because those the people running it got jammed up. And, you know, I felt like, you know, that you know, we, we needed to be tested and exposed in some areas. So, you know, that was a little bit of a moving target. Heck, they wanted us to stay up there and play Villanova. Um, we didn't do it because we had the Maryland game. And in hindsight, I wish we stayed up longer in there. In, in, in the bubble, they were testing every day up there, you know. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a moving target. I still think the 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 end game, while it looks the end game is going to be the same goal, but it might be different path getting there. Like you know, how do you, you got to get some games in to figure out where you're at and how to how to get better. Now the other question I would have, and I don't know if you have the answer to this or not, 
let's say middle of January, you or another team in the conference test positive and has to go into a pause, what happens to those conference games? Because there's, it, there's, there's, there's no gap between the end of the season and the CAA tournament. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you could, you could lose games. Um, you could end up rescheduling those games midweek. Obviously we might benefit from our geography a little bit when it comes to that compared to a school, maybe in New York and North Carolina, you know, uh, if they had to play each other. And then I'd like to believe that we'd stay committed to potentially rescheduling and any opponent just, to, just to play, you know what I mean? It is is it also a possibility, and this just hit me, this might be a stupid question, but say you're supposed to go play Elon and one of the teams has to pause. Um, and because of travel, maybe you play Madison two more times instead of going to play Elon. Or, yep. or, or playing a William & Mary four times instead of playing Elon. So first of all, there's no such, we, we never use that word. There's no such thing as a, as a stupid or silly question. And yeah, those things are all possibilities. I, you could have, we have tiebreaker scenarios in the league. I don't have them all in front of me, but knowing that there's a minimum amount of league games you need to play to be a league champion. And um, there's also, when you talk about seeding for tournament, you could have one team be, you know, it'll be like a winning percentage. You know what I mean? One team could right. be 12 and six. Someone else could be, Seven and four, you know. Uh, that's, well, Major that's League just, Baseball did that. They didn't all play the same amount of games. That's a great. That's a great point. I, I didn't. I didn't even realize that. My Red Sox were so bad. I stopped watching this year. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. It's so it's, you know, it, it's um, it's it's challenging. And 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 let's not forget it. And this isn't a cliche or anything. You know the, you know our job as coaches and and the people that support our program. We appreciate the support. We, we take care of our guys. You know, that's the experience they signed up for when they came to Towson and, and their 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 mental health and, the, and their well-being and their welfare. And, and you know, a big part of that revolves around practicing and, and, and competing, you know. So, well, you know, my thing is to – I told our guys uh, on a Zoom, you know, on Saturday, like, look at – my college coach used to say, don't panic, adjust. And that's what we're going to try – that's what we're going to try to do here. Um, so, yeah, I mean – Best thing would be to everyone to test negative the rest of the year. How likely is that? You know, I, I mean, you know, look at the look at the numbers. Right, right. We only got about thirty seconds. When can you start practicing again? If all the tests come back positive, that negative. Yeah, and and that's a moving target too. Right now, it's a it's a it's a fourteen day pause. So roughly, I think it's like December eighteenth, but. I've, heard, I've been told that's fluid because the new CDC guidelines say it could be seven days if everyone has a negative test, which which we do right now, or 10 days without a negative test and we'll be being tested. So I'm obviously, uh, you know, the county health officials um, make those decisions and I know our university is working with them. So we're hoping it's less, but I, I don't, you know, I don't have any control over that. All right, coach. Well, we'll meet again next week for another Tiger Talk. I guess you'll have more concrete answers than we hope. Yeah, everyone stay patient. I said it's gonna um it's just, it's gonna be rocky and the games you are getting to watch, uh enjoy those. Enjoy those.